G'day folks and welcome back for another riveting video tutorial on chemical thermodynamics. And in this video tutorial we can talk about the second law of thermodynamics. Just a very quick recap. Um, so far in this short library of thermodynamics video tutorials, we've introduced some new terminology and distinguished between certain terms. We've talked about the first law of thermodynamics, how a coffee cup calorimeter and how a bomb calorimeter might be used to determine either the enthalpy or the change in internal energy for a reaction. So it must be just about time for the second law of thermodynamics. Can we understand spontaneous change? Spontaneous reactions involve a change in the degree of order. And if we think about um, this little scenario here, it's, it's, it's kind of a logical way to think about what might happen. We've got a box, we've got two different gases inside the box, and the two gases are separated by a thin wall. If we move that thin wall, we just slide it out of place and the molecules are still contained inside the box. As time progresses, we would expect them to move around and to jumble and become disordered. In other words, as time progresses, we move from a state of order to disorder. A change in the order is a change in the number of ways of arranging the particles, and it's a key factor in determining the direction of a spontaneous process. So as we go from solid to liquid to gas, we should expect an increase in the amount of disorder that we have. As we put a crystal and a liquid together, in other words, perhaps we might be putting some salt in water, we would move to having ions in solution. Well, naturally, this should be thought of as an increase in the amount of disorder. And if two crystals, two solids, reacted with each other, perhaps giving gases and ions in solution, clearly a much more disordered form. And this introduces the idea of entropy. We can actually give a numerical value to the amount of, if you like, inherent disorder in its standard state something might have. It's called the entropy, and of course in its standard state, it's the S naught, so the superscript naught value. And you'll see the units that we measure entropy in here, joules per mole per Kelvin. So the standard molar entropy is the entropy per mole of a pure substance while in its standard state. Values are usually tabulated 298K. They'll change depending on temperature. And you can see a few examples here, and there are a few gaseous ones, and clearly they're the largest values in that table. Let's talk about a few things that uh, can be manipulated, if you like, parameters which can change, which will lead to a change in the value of these S0 values. And the first, of course, is temperature. As you increase the temperature of a species, the S0, um, the S0 value increases, or the entropy value increases. And you can see that's true for these five species here. As the physical state changes, the entropy also changes. So as we go from a solid to a liquid to a gas, you can see that the entropy is rapidly increasing. It's important to note that we also see uh, an increase in the amount of entropy at those interfaces. So as you go from solid to liquid and liquid to gas. Dissolution of a solid or a liquid will also lead to an increase in the entropy. So the entropy of a dissolved solid or liquid is usually larger than the entropy of the pure solute. Mind you, the extent depends upon the nature of the solute and solvent. Dissolution of a gas. A gas actually becomes more ordered when it dissolves in a liquid or a solid. There's an example here of carbon dioxide in water you can see much more carbon dioxide will dissolve in cold water than it will in hot water. Finally, the larger a molecule is, in other words, the more atoms it has in its molecular structure, the more possibilities for vibrations and rotations and translational motion, what we call de degrees of freedom. So as molecules get larger, their inherent entropy increases.
here's a few things to think about to get you in the right frame of mind when considering the entropy of systems. And on this page here, we're just going to compare two scenarios. So the first one, make sure my little pen's on here. I'll go for a sexy purple colour. We've got, uh, the question is, choose the member with a higher entropy in each of the following pairs. One mole of SO2, gaseous, or one mole of SO3. Hopefully, you chose the larger molecule. It has more degrees of freedom, more possible rotations and vibrations, which can give rise to higher entropy. Question B, one mole of solid carbon dioxide or one mole of gaseous carbon dioxide? That's right, gases have higher entropy than the corresponding solid. What about this one? Three moles of oxygen gas, O2, or two moles of ozone gas? So these are equivalent in the sense that both examples have six oxygen atoms in total. One of them has three moles of a gas, the other has two moles of a gas. Now, even though the ozone molecule has more atoms in it, the entropic effect is overridden by the fact that there are more gaseous molecules on this side. And so this will have higher entropy. One mole of KBr solid versus one mole of KBr aqueous. As a general rule, when we dissolve something in water, we increase the disorder. Question E. Seawater in midwinter at 8 degrees or in midsummer at 25 degrees? As temperature increases, so does disorder. And the final question F is propane versus octane, both in gaseous form. Well, it's going to be the larger molecule. More bonds, more possible vibrations and different degrees of freedom, leading to larger entropy. Hopefully now you're starting to get some order in your thinking about entropy.